Hey folks, Donnie here. Uh, I just wanted to uh, continue on with um, the kind of like tutorial stuff. I think I've affected my audio a little bit here better, so it's better than the story one I did earlier. But we're going to do a um, DLC. We're going to do my favorite DLC. Well, one of my favorites. Both Night of the Hangry Horde and Carnival of Chaos are probably my favorites. But we're going to do Night of the Hangry Horde. And uh, I'm going to show you some techniques for these. Uh, I'm going to try to go over some of the stuff that I talked about in story, but because my um, audio, I think, is a little bit better, uh, be able to hear me a little bit better over the music and sound effects. So let's see. Where am I here? Ah, Horde 7. Um, so we're just going to start from the beginning. There's quite a bit in here. As you can see, there's some stuff that I just haven't even restart because apparently it's very hard. Uh, let's see, where do we start? Where is one? Here's one. Okay. So, for this stage, you actually um, kind of want to see if you could switch the pots and the pans. Um, there is a lot to, of stuff to do on the top, not much to do on the bottom, other than actually provide the food. So, you'll see here. Everything is going to need um, a carrot, I'm sorry, um, onions and potatoes, okay? So, um, one of the things that you can do is when you pick up something and you hold the throw button, remember that when you hold the throw button, you don't move as you make a direction. So you can actually be um, highlighting the onions and then you can, you know, let go to throw. And then you can just keep pressing pick up and throw. And you can see I'm not even moving. I'm just right next to this thing and picking up and throwing. Same thing with these. You'll notice that, you know, most of the time you'll just start turning around because I'm doing it too fast. But you you want to, like, fill this up with lots and lots of stuff. Okay? The other thing you want to do is you want to bring these plates down because um, the other thing that would be super important here is to kind of keep this middle counter clean. And then the next thing you need to do is, is get some of the stuff up here. Um, again, you want to try to prioritize uh, the onions and the potatoes. And then the other thing you can do, like I said, is you could bring these pots up here. Um, it'll definitely be very common for, you know, at, when you're actually playing this to um, to not have this and people just kind of continuously chop and cut things for you. But generally speaking, you can try to go ahead and do this because um, there's a lot going on. I need way more of this. Okay. Fill it up. This needs an onion. I have no leaks. Here's a leak. I think this won't chop. Will it? No, it does. Leak here. There we go. There we go. Alright, so while those are cooking, we can go ahead and get these things off the uh, off the chopping board and put some more things in. Okay, we are done. See, like, what I'm doing here now, which is just throwing things into the pots, is a lot more common as a strategy because, um, this, like, again, like I mentioned, there's so much happening up on the top. And as you can see, also, the timer hasn't started, so, like, that's another thing that you can totally exploit here. Um, just making sure that you can get everything prepped. You definitely want to cut, you know, as much as you possibly can before you start. Cook this. This. Okay, and while that's cooking, get out of the way, sir. Uh, let's start serving. Again, double serving is also kind of could be helpful here as well. So we could start double serving. That actually works on, who knows. But, that. Okay. Um, and something I just wanted to show you from earlier, from the first story thing, you can basically throw plates. See that? I, I kind of threw the plate. And the way that that works, again, is just the dash motion and dropping at the same time. So I'm basically throwing those plates like that. <clears throat> so 
So you can throw paint, plates, pots, pans, all that kind of stuff. Um, but you want one person up on top, making sure that they have everything um, chopping up on top, and then the, uh, also washing the dishes. And then the person on the bottom is in charge of throwing those ingredients up to the top and um, plating this stuff because the person on top should technically be serving, right? So they should be doing like something like this and picking stuff back up, right? So I'll pick this up, pick this up, and leave this there. Then I can start serving again, see if I can get a double serving or something. Oh well, <clears throat> so that's the idea for that stage. Moving right along. And then we'll go to one, two. Admittedly, I don't think I remember any of the numbers for these, except for the actual horde stages. So, Night of the Hangry Horde has special stages that get opened up uh, as you open up each world, uh, which are on the outer perimeter of this. So, this is one, two. One, two has a strat uh, that's important for you to know. Um, so elevation is kind of janky here. And what that means is, you know, there's stairs to get up to the second level here. But you kind of can get away with not needing them. So let's see which character am I first here. I should be on the bottom. Great. So what you do is, what they want you to do is they want you to come up the stairs, put this thing here because you can't throw upstairs, right? It just kind of like falls down. So what you want to do instead is actually throw stuff into this corner. Just pile up all the stuff in this corner, all the potatoes and, and uh, carrots. That's what you want to do. All the potatoes, all the carrots, pile up into that corner. And then, when they're all piled up in that corner, you can just pick them up from here. And start completely uh, piling them in here. Because the guy or gal that is uh, helping you as your partner in here um, is, is going to do a lot of waiting, unfortunately. They're just going to be waiting for you to get stuff for them. So uh, so uh, another thing you need to do is you need to uh, also collect coal. So bring the coal. Again, you could bring it up the stairs or you could leave it right here. And then pick it up and bring it to him. Okay, so that's another thing you can do there. Um, but the expectation is this person is going to be chopping a whole bunch, right? and then they just throw it to the ground, and then you're gonna be going ahead and filling these things up. Everything will need um, potatoes and carrots, and then some things will need the, uh, the, the beef block, and some other things will need the, the chicken block. Um, the way things would cook faster is with that coal that I showed you. So this coal that's right here has to go into this fire fireplace. Okay, and now everything's cooking a lot much faster. Um, this one goes in here, this one goes in here. Um, if you have four people, you can start using these as well. There are four places for you to cook, but commonly, if it's um, only a few people, um, then uh, you'll only probably want to use the first two up there. All right, and that's the general gist. Again, the whole the whole um, the whole thing is to basically pile all that stuff in here and just start picking stuff up over here. This person should also not forget to bring that thing back. We can also throw that down there. You know, so there's a whole bunch of different things you can do in here to kind of make things faster. Okay, we're going to go to 1 3. One, three. Clearly, I haven't played this one in a while. <clears throat> um, so, the gimmick here is that you have you you can't both have the ingredients and the chopping boards available at the same time. Um, there is a strat for you to be able to move your character to the other side from here. You kind of have to like stack some plates, but you can technically do that. Anyway, same thing I was talking about before. You're gonna grab onto something, hold the throw button, and then be able to kind of like direct it in that area, and then just keep hitting. Um, Pick up and throw. Pick up and throw. Pick up and throw. You're going to go and provide as much ingredients as they, you possibly can uh, to your partner over there. Same thing. And if it ends up on your side, it's also totally fine. You can just throw it back to them. Um, and like I said, everything's going to need potatoes and carrots, and then some things will need broccoli. So I'm going to have a couple more broccolis over here for them. You can see I have too many ingredients. Things are disappearing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this button. 
and then my partner's going to start chopping. All right, and while that happens, I'm going to start filling these up with the right uh, kinds of meats. And then this person, of course, would throw this stuff over. You also want to get these plates over there to your partner um, so that they can actually serve stuff. So that would go over there, and then you would go ahead and serve. You know, but I'm not going to actually serve anything. Um, but that's the general gist. Uh, the dirty plates, actually, I'll show you what a dirty plate will end up in. Dirty plates will end up right here. Right, so here are your dirty plates. You make sure you pass it over to your partner. And start washing. And that's the general gist here. This, there's nothing really crazy other than making sure that you have um, plenty of ingredients for the person on the bottom, and then just taking your time. Um, it's very easy for these stages where you're making um, the meat, potato, carrot accommodations to get confused about which thing is cooking when. So just take your time and take a look at the orders before you place anything in those pans. Um, it's very important to just kind of like, you know, take a moment to look and see what needs to be cooked. This is a meat burrito stage. Um, the gimmick here is that there's a drawbridge that goes back and forth. Um, as with any burrito stage, what you really want to be doing is, of course, prioritizing, making sure that you have a rice and burrito ready. So I'm going to do that on this side on the right. Make sure we have lots of burritos cooking over here, and then we'll go back over here and start cutting. One of the things that happens very often here is people will be making burritos without um, <coughs> plates uh, because the the um, the red herring here is that the plates actually start over there on the left side. But what's going to happen is all your clean plates are going to wind up over here. All right. So what's going to happen is you actually want to make sure that all of these have plates ready, and then they bring the, the clean plates over here with the burritos on them. Okay, so actually, clean plates technically should be on this bridge. Okay. There we go, that's a double. Um, so that's... I'm gonna, again, I'm going to show you what happens there. Um, let me just get the rice going. How did I miss that, bro? So we got dirty plates. Dirty plates come over here. Okay. And then when you go over there, you're going to chop that. Sorry, you're going to move, move the bridge. Pick up the dirty plates. Okay. And then again, all the plates that you should not have a a burrito without a plate go over here. Okay, you should always have it on a plate. Um, <clears throat> so that if that means you have to wash a plate to get the burrito on the plate, do it. Because it is completely unhelpful for this guy over here to have a burrito without a plate. Because they just can't serve it. Okay, So make sure that your character over here is putting burritos on plates. All right? that's, that's the best tip that I can give you here. All right? Burrito with a plate. <clears throat> uh, and that's really I see a lot of people you know finish a burrito put it on the bridge and then doesn't have a plate and then the person on the left hand side is like I can't serve this without a plate meanwhile the people on the right now are beginning to wash plates and wants to put you know uh, tortillas and rice together on a plate without any uh, meat on them and that doesn't help the person on the left because they're waiting for a clean plate so just Keep it um, consistent. Make sure that there's a burrito on the plate as you go. This is another um, stage uh, where coordination would be really good. If you have four people, you don't even have to touch the bridge. Um, <clears throat> so the idea here, unfortunately, with two people is that you have to kind of do some bridge management. Okay, so first off, we're going to set a couple things over here. Okay, this here, 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 here. Okay, plates should go on this side whenever they're clean. So this has got to be out of the way. Another thing, because you have these bowls here, 
you want to kind of have um, the bowl set up for that person to fill. You don't want to put individual items on this board because there's just not enough room for individual items to stay here. So now you can, you've basically filled up the entire countertop with six items using three balls. All right, put that there. We don't know what this one is going to be yet, but we can start cooking it. This is a good time to throw some more stuff over if you wanted to. There. Now we're waiting. This is also must be a pretty nice day to do um, normally with uh, just, you know, yourself. <clears throat> because there's no chopping. Alright. Right over. Bring this over. Uh, and again, with the bowls, you want to make sure you fill this bowl up before you give it to your partner. Okay, so now your partner can go ahead and cook this. Cook this. And then this person can go ahead and serve. 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 What do we got? We got a blue. We got a red, sorry. person can also throw. Okay, again, take the bowl out, give your partner. Now at this point, of course, I don't have any plates, so I have to go get the plates. Um, when you have four people and you have a person that's hanging out down here, the plates can just go up here to your partner, and then the partner can go ahead and go across the bridge. All right, but since I only have two people, I need to do it this way. And before they took that bowl, make sure they fill it up. like that. All right, that's how you do this stage. Fine. Okay, it people get really frustrated with this particular kind of stage because they're like, "Oh, you hit the bridge and you blah 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 and, and you know, it's like people are, you know, there's too many things sometimes people get flustered and it's, it doesn't need to be that difficult if you focus on um, filling the bowls before you pass them. Um, it's a lot easier. You won't get a lot of, um, you know, uh, orders that aren't correct and stuff like that. This is a really difficult stage um, because there's a lot going on. But it's the same concept as the stage that we just had. You want to try to fill up the bowls before you give them to people. You want to throw out items before you'll need them. All right. So watch my player on the left. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually throw out a whole bunch of stuff that I'm going to need. OK. You do want to throw a couple of these things to your partner. But generally speaking, you want to kind of fill this up because what's going to happen is these areas are going to move. So I'm going to go ahead and move this here, there. He wants a whole bunch of stuff. Move this. Okay, now the areas have moved. Okay, next thing again, same kind of thing. You want to give these bowls to your partner and then have your partner fill them up. As they're being filled up over here, you want to kind of take them away so that you can see um, what you what you um, what thing is filled and what's not. Because as the counters are vertical, it's really hard because these these indicators will cover the the bowls. Okay. Okay. This one's still going. I'm just gonna leave that plate here. So again, um, the chopping block is gonna be um, opposite of uh, these these bowls here, so it's gonna make it a little bit challenging. I'm only going to cook one thing here, by the way. Okay. So this is going to go in here. Okay. Um, another thing that needs to be happening here is you have this um, this pot. Oop, not that. This pot here. Okay. That pot needs coal in it. So right now my person on the right can get the coal, but the person on the left is the person who actually gets 
and puts it into the, um, the fire. The fire only really does anything for these ovens that are over here on the left-hand side at the moment. When it's done mixed, you want to put it into the oven. Okay, and then you want to, of course, continue to, you know, chop or otherwise, you know, do the things that need to get done. One of the other things that's super important here is you can get stuff from any oven from the back. So here's my, my character in the back, picking up from the back. Okay, and then I can start. Okay, and the same thing as before, you want to take the, the, uh, the bowl out and you want to fill it. You could fill it right from the ground. And there you go. Do your partner, partner. There you go. So there's a lot to go on here. You have to fill this up. You have to give that to your partner. Partner's going to help you take this. You know, put it in the, put it in the um, oven. So there's a lot to go on here. A lot to pay attention to. Um, and as long as you know what your role is on that particular side, um, it should be fine. But like I said, there's a lot to go on. Make sure that this has coal in it and it's always here. Make sure that you're washing the dishes when they show up. Um, and if there's something that's done, right, you want to go ahead and, and serve it from the back. It's so much faster because your, your windows are up over here on the top, right? So you don't want to go ahead and have to take it out from the front and then go all the way around up here to serve or even pass it to your partner, right? You want to go ahead and get it from the back, okay? Make sure there's plenty of food thrown into the corners here because you're going to need it, right? So that's when the chopping's going to be happening. Um, just, you know, there's a lot of setup. You don't want to um, be waiting for your partner or the, the, the ingredients to be on your side. It's always a great idea to just be prepping um, as much as you possibly can when you, when, you know, when there's nothing else to do. If you're just waiting for things to cook, you know, just start continuously prepping over here, chopping stuff up and giving it to, you, to either your partner or your side, right? But yeah, it is a that's 100% a very challenging stage if you, you know, have a uh, you know a partner that's a little um, a novice potentially or a, a beginner on this, it'd be very diff difficult. But when you have a really good team, and especially if you have four players, if you have four players, each person has a quadrant, and it really works out nice. Um, and there's absolutely places where you know having more players will absolutely help, but all of these stages are definitely beatable with two avatars. Might not be very efficient, but they're definitely beatable. So there's another burrito stage. And similar to many of the other ones in Hordes, um, the, uh, these areas will switch. So you want to fill this up with rice. Okay. Um, and then you want to go ahead and grab uh, ingredients. Ingredients are cut with the guillotine here. This button does not cut this side's guillotine, it cuts the other side's guillotine, so your partner's gonna have to cut this for you. All right. As you make stuff with rice, make sure you have a tortilla for it. So get another one of these chickens here. Pots and pans uh, shifting is actually faster than it is in probably many other stages. Something to pay attention to. Oh, this character, please. Um, the other thing that's a little tricky here is these are pits, so you could technically totally fall in that pit. Something to pay attention to. So here you go, by the pit. Um, just makes things a little bit more challenging than they normally would be, you know, to have the pits in there. That's really it. Make sure that you have plates washed. And also, um, in this particular stage, you kind of want to try not to um, have these burritos with plates yet. You only want to have them when you're ready to serve, right? So I have ready things to serve like this. So I'm going to give a single plate to my, my partner, take the plate, let the partner decide which one goes next. They'll put the plate on and serve, okay? Right now, we don't have any... Um, to call the meats, Is that right now. But let's say this is a meat one, I'm gonna go ahead and put the plate on it and serve. Okay, so let the person on the left-hand side decide what thing gets a plate and what doesn't. 
right? This is this is the most common thing that you want to do with burritos, is that you want to have the um, these tortillas and rice together. You're going to put a, uh, some meat on it, and then you're going to let the plate uh, be the final thing. It's not always the case, but in this particular one, you want to have the plate be the last thing that goes on the burrito. You don't want to do this, okay? Because what happens with this sometimes is you won't have the right thing cooking, and you'll have something that has a, a you know basically almost a finished dish, but you can't do anything with it. You have to wait. And that means you're you're out of a plate that could have been used to serve something that's actually ready. Okay, so that's the important thing here. Um, again, in some other stages, you actually want to have this configuration, but in this particular stage, you want a single plate, and then the plate is the last thing that the the food has. Okay. Like, um, let's see, I think it's level 2-6 in story, which is the one that, like, uh, you know, is a transformative stage, as uh, different different types of kitchens. Um, that one, you want plate burrito with rice all together. Okay, there's another stage that is, um, can be very confusing. There's a, 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 some tricks to it. First off, there's six different ingredients um, and three different combinations. Uh, one of the uh, things to know about this particular stage is that everything needs an onion, okay? Some things will need, uh, many things will need a potato, and then um, each dish will either have a carrot, a leek, uh, or cheese and broccoli, okay? So you can see, actually, those are all three of the item uh, top pot possible dishes on top. The trick to keeping track of that stuff is just looking at the last ingredient. The last ingredient is the thing that's going to tell you about all the previous ingredients. So anything that needs a carrot is going to need onion and potato. Anything that has a leek will need onion and potato. Anything that has a cheese will need onion and broccoli. All right, so those are the only three things. That's the way to kind of keep track of all the stuff that's happening here. Um, the other thing that you want to do is you kind of normally want the bridge to be in this position, okay? And the reason I've done that is uh, to actually kill myself there or put myself in the pit is so that I can reset my, myself like this, okay? So this is the position I want to be in. So what this person down here wants to do is they want to look at the order and only throw exactly what they need over here, okay? Just to keep things a little bit more... Um, put the wrong thing in here anyway. Just to keep things a little bit more um, uh, um, orderly, okay? Then this person down here, who's chopping right now, is going to be in charge of throwing things to the partner up on top. Okay, so I'm going to throw it, put it in the basket, put it back down here, chop the next thing. Um, the person on top here is going to be in charge of making sure they're putting the right things in the right pots. Okay. And I'm just going to kind of do one order just to show you what's going on. Come on, hurry up. Okay. So now that that's cooking, this person, of course, will continue to do the next order. That's fine. But this person is going to take a plate, take this out, and serve. Okay? And then they're going to continue to go ahead and, and do more orders as things happen here. What's going to eventually happen is you're going to have a dirty plate. Here's a dirty plate. The person over here is going to go ahead and take it over and wash it. Okay? Take that off for right now. This is washed. When they're when they're be either before they're washing or after, as long as this person's not trying to serve, they're going to be paying attention to this guy up here. As long as they're not serving, you're going to hit this spot. Okay. Take the plate. Don't go across. Just drop it right here on on the um, uh, on the bridge. Because when you bring this thing back to the position that you want it to be in, the bridge will take the plate across. Okay. And that's how you. Um, keep this bridge clear, because that's really what you want to do. You never really want anyone on this bridge, okay? The, the worst that you want on this bridge is just to put the plates that are clean onto the bridge, hit the button, and then reset back to this position. You want the bridges horizontal all the time for as long as possible, okay? And that's how you do this stage. Right, here we go.
go. 3-3. Three, 3-3, three. Three, three I think, is really fun. Um, it can get confusing when you first see it because of the way that the portals are set up. Um, in the center room, the portal on the left takes you to the right side. The portal on the right takes you to the left side. Um, again, this is like the confusing kind of, you know, um, pots and pan, uh, um, or I should say pan thing, but start off, you could take the, um, the coal into the bucket and you could throw it through the portal with the dash drop technique, basically. Okay? So you kind of want to keep that kind of, um, stored here on the right hand side. Alright? The next thing is that you are going to want to keep a character over here to just kind of maintain the kitchen while everything's cooking, but you want to throw all the ingredients over through the portal here. Some stuff is not going to go through the portal, it's going to hit the wall, but eventually you want to go ahead and make sure that you prioritize the carrots and the potatoes, make sure that they all uh, make it through that portal. Um, actually, I don't have anything that needs broccoli right now, which is great, but make sure you also have meats. And then your character that's hanging out in here is going to start chopping. Of course, I have two characters, so I'm going to kind of help them out by filling up these. Like that. This. Yes. I'll take that from you. Thank you very much. Okay. And as you can see, the ovens aren't really cooking very well. That's because the, the coal hasn't been uh, started. Okay. So that's the, uh, the thing with the coal is if the coal is running, which I'm going to do. Uh, do I have a carrot in here? No, I didn't put any carrots in here. Coal now. Coal in the oven. Fill it up again. Put it through the portal. Here. Okay. Go back. This is not ready yet. All right. Now for uh, these things that are done plates, you can again do the dash drop technique to kind of like send it through the portal. Kind of, instead of dashing, I usually just use the momentum of me walking to put it to the portal. So you can see here, watch. Just like that. So you want to, like, throw the plate in front of the portal, but not go through the portal yourself. Just like that. Okay. And then the person that's kind of, like, controlling the middle and the right-hand sides can start, like, you know, kind of putting these things together over here. So we're going to go ahead and do this. Okay, next one. Oop. Not fast enough out and then we're gonna go ahead and cook again send that through 30 plates also through okay and then as this person's washing you can either when they're finished doing the plate there you can see the back or what you could do is as things are done here you could send um, the pan back through I don't recommend this because you really need the pans to stay on the left hand side but um, you could do that right Go ahead and cook this. There you go. And uh, that's the general gist. Again, you're going to have one person stay on the left-hand side, and you're going to have one person kind of be between the middle and the right-hand side. Okay. Totally screwed that up. Because the toys are still there. Okay. This. There. This guy's going to take this. This. Okay. Just like that. So yeah, I actually really like that stage. It's actually really fun because you you know you can definitely do it with two people. I actually four people is a lot of people for that. It's it could be really confusing about like trying to keep track of the orders because sometimes like it's but it's better to have only a few people because there's not a lot of orders to keep track of. But um, you know, uh, with a lot of people, it could it could be a little challenging. So now I'm going to show you the hordes. So the hordes are a little bit different from the rest of the kitchens because um, you need to serve different windows, different things. So each window has a couple of monsters that are going to be um, going against it and attacking the window. Um, but each window has its own order that you need to serve to it. All right. Uh, and then you have a life bar on the bottom that you need to maintain. And the way to maintain that life bar is to keep the monsters back. So. For this stage, there's nothing really going on. Move this fire extinguisher and put it in the corner. Okay. And then start chopping a whole bunch of meat. Um, one of the things I actually really like doing is the same kind of thing that I that I would do normally is just kind of throw things into a corner. 
to my uh, my partner who can actually go ahead and do something about it. Okay, so that one goes there, and actually we happen to have the same um, on the uh, each one of these. Okay, but if you have more people, you'd be chopping a lot more meat. Um, with these burgers, just take a bun that's right here, take the burger, put it out. You can see the monster kind of banging on this door, and they're making a little bit, um, making a little bit of a, you know, a dent in the door. Right, there's like a board that's missing. So um, you want to make sure that those those uh, doors don't have like this green aura that appears. Because when the green aura appears, green aura, like it's like, like, um, it's like a, what's it called? Uh, it's like a, like a glow effect. Yeah, it's like a glow effect that will appear um, on the, uh, on the door. That means that they're getting through the door. So you don't want that. You want them to stay back. And the way to stay back is by fixing the door. You fix the door with the money that's over there on the bottom left-hand corner I have 180 of. You can go up to the door and hit X. You can bang on the door and fix it. Okay. So um, you want to try to refrain from fixing doors if you can. You shouldn't need to in many of the um, earlier stages if you're really um, paying attention to stuff. But uh, generally speaking, um, you want to use your money for other things. And in later stages, starting at Horde 5, you're going to be able to open gates with, um, with the money. Okay, so that's what you really want to do, is you want to be opening gates with the money. You don't want to be um, trying to fix the doors if you can, if you can handle it. Yeah, so I'm going to actually let this guy through, because I want to show you what the aura looks like. The beeping just basically means that they're about to come through. See, now this is green, right? And you'll notice my life bar, the castle at the end, starts to go down. You see that? As, the per as that monster's trying to come in, the life bar's going to go down. If your life bar goes all the way down, you'll end the stage. Okay? So the only way to get rid of these monsters, of course, is to serve. Or you could also, again, fix the door. So fixing the door will make the, um, the life bar stop depleting and the monster stop coming in. But also, just to get rid of the monster, serve them. Right? And that's the gist. Um, each uh, horde has waves of uh, monsters that will come in. Uh, Horde 1 has three waves uh, and two different serving windows, okay? Um, so for that stage, really, it's, it's a very introductory stage. Just keep making burgers, make sure you have enough condiments uh, for the burgers, and you'll be good to go. Horde 2? Um, Horde 2 and 4 are very much um, a cooperative stages, where you're your characters don't have free reign across the entire board. So you'll need to use um, uh, some cooperation here. Uh, the second player side for this particular stage does all the work. Because they have all the ingredients and they're going to be cooking. So what you want to do first is you want to throw out tons and tons of ingredients in here. Because what's going to happen is you're going to have your partner up on the top over here. The, the player one is going to be bored out of their mind unless they have stuff to do up over here. Okay. Um, technically, you should be prioritizing the dough first because the dough is the thing that has um, the base. Um, but, uh, you know, you can, of course, chop anything. Okay. There's ovens on both sides. So you can go ahead and take, you know, a finished pizza and, and begin to, um, to cook it. it this, it's very possible here that um, you'll have more than enough pizzas. Um, all the time, so just be sure to um, to uh, uh, what's it called um, to continue. Always be making pizzas. That's what I want to say. Always be making pizzas. Again, we have to fix the store because we have enough pizzas yet. Here, should prioritize the dough. good place to um, practice uh, double serving. Okay, let's put that down here. Let's do a little bit of salami. 
Um, and for the double serving technique, that is the same thing as a plate toss, just using the momentum. So I'm going to show you the plate toss again. That's just this. Okay. But when you get to the door, you're going to mash on the drop button. So this is the drop button. Because that's a pick up and drop at the same time, right? So um, what you're actually doing when you do the, the um, double serving, and let's actually get a plate over here and try again. Um, what you're doing is you're, you're basically doing the dash drop technique, which sends the plate over through. But it's also picking up and dropping the plate and picking it up again at the same time. Okay. So right about here. See that? Double serve. That's going to give me a second plate. You see the two plates that just stacked up right there. Really just one. Okay, let's get rid of these guys here. Um, when you cut these um, on either side, you want to throw them against this wall um, because the person on the on the bottom is going to decide if it needs one or not. You don't want to go ahead and prematurely put it on a pizza that doesn't need it. Like I said, there's a lot of waiting around that can go on for the player on the top because the player on the bottom can has all the ingredients, they can chop, and they cook. So that's why it actually is going to take a little, uh, uh, you know, all the person on the top is really doing is washing plates and serving. So there's really nothing for them to do here. So that's why it's, like, really boring for the person on top, but the person on the bottom can, like, you know, you know do all the things. Okay. Um, so yeah, like I said, the person on the bottom is going to be doing a lot of work. The person on the top is literally just washing plates and serving. That's all I do. Need this guy again. That's one. I'm losing it now. So yeah, that's how the stage kind of works. It's just going to be that. Um, and like I said, it's it's really boring for the first player um, person because it's just serving whatever the person at the bottom created. Um, clearly, of course, they could help chop and things like that. But um, that's why you want to throw so many ingredients to the top so that your player on the top has stuff to do. Okay, you want you want equal amount of work between both characters. And if the person on the bottom is doing all the work, it's not. Out. All right. Horde three is probably my least favorite horde. Um, uh, it's the only horde that you can actually like die in a pit uh, because the bridge uh, in the middle uh, happens there. So the the um, the thing that you're going to try to do here is um, throw as many ingredients over here that are down over here to the right hand side to be chopped. All this stuff over here, you want to pile it up. Give them all these things here. Okay? Uh, if I could throw straight. The person over here, while that's happening, should actually be throwing um, food up here. The, uh, the noodles. Okay? Because that's going to keep that, that thing clear up for this person to go ahead and throw all these noodles over here while they're chopping all those ingredients. You want to clean this up a little bit as well because this is a, like a you know, place for people to start moving. All right, so now the next thing is you're going to be starting to cook stuff over here. Anything that's extra, just throw it against the wall. Okay, get it out of the way. You don't want anything that doesn't need to be up here, up here. Okay, it's super important. Okay, collect the stuff.
Full serve. Okay, take that, take that. Cook more, oop, cook more pasta. Um, as things are being chopped on the bottom right hand corner, you can definitely throw them uh, to the left and pile them also over there, right? So, pull this over here, pull this over here. Okay, There's more stuff that's done over here, so I'm gonna pull it over. Start chopping this stuff, chopping this stuff. It's very common for the monster up here to break out, so make sure that you pay attention to this door and just fix it probably more often than, than most. Okay. Wash a plate. This is also a really good place to do plate throwing because the plate will actually go across. Um, let me see if I can do a demonstration of that real quick here. So you can actually have your character over here and get ready for the plate. Let's see if I can do it. There you go. So you can throw that plate across. And then if you're really slick, you can go ahead and throw it back, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go over here. Sometimes it's helpful to actually just send the plate across over the, even over the bridge. So you can do a plate toss just like that, and then go back. Um, that'll just keep the bridge from, from being too cluttered. Up a double serve. Okay, and just keep on cooking. Um, you want to also make sure that you're not cooking stuff that you might not need. So um, make sure that you don't have, like, three mushrooms cooking being all cooked at the same time when you have you know um, a whole bunch of things that need uh what's it called uh, meat or vice versa okay because it would be really bad if it, you know you have um if you have a pot or a pan that stuff all right say a pan that has stuff that you don't need right so you don't really want that you want just um all the uh um all stuff that you need Look at all these plates. Look at all these plates. Okay, you're about to try to come through and stop you from coming through. Stop it. Okay, we'll do one more. Okay. Um, also, when the stage takes, that's when the bridge is going to change. It's very common for other stages to do. Okay. Now, hordes four to eight are much more fun, in my opinion. Uh, like I said earlier, horde four is another one that's very cooperative, where you're like in different sections. But there's a very um, significant kind of strat or procedure that you should be following when doing horde four. Just gotta find a ramp. All right, so Horde 4 has two different areas, one for the first player side on the left, the other one for the second player side on the right, and the pots and pans are on the top and the bottom. You need to switch the pots and the pans in this stage. So um, the pans need to go, the pots and pans need to go in the center of the, uh, of, of the center counter, so the other person can pick it up and use their side. So this, this, and this, same thing this, this, pick up, pick up a pot of the way over here, okay, and then we're going to move our pans down, and that's going to make it much easier because your meats go with the pans and your rice goes in the pots, just do this, okay, for the meats down here, before you start cutting anything, you want to actually throw out a ton of these, a ton of the meats, just keep throwing them out, just sit next to the, the bin and start throwing them out toward the, um, toward the thing. Okay, same thing as before. You're going to go ahead and pick up these. Okay. I don't have any money yet. So I'm chopping this one. Okay. Start cutting this. That's all. So now you can see that I could actually continue making stuff over here. Even though um, 
uh, I don't have the bins for the food, right? So that's really nice. You can see I'm losing a whole bunch of health here, but that's okay. It's over. As you create um, burritos and rice, you want to put the burritos and rice in the center cap. Every single time you finish the burrito and rice, put it in the center cap. Okay? You also, of course, want to move the dirty dishes over there as well. Then, because the person who's cooking is going to pick up a, one of these and put it down there, put the plate and serve. There you go. here. Typical. Now, when you have a burrito that has meat on it, don't put it in the center unless you're going to serve it. Put it on the island. That goes for the left and the right sides. Um, and the reason for that is because the center gets really, really um, messy with all of these burritos here, okay? You want them here because you want to be able to make sure that you can always put them on a uh, on a clean burrito. So take this up, put it in the center, all right? First, let's wash the dishes. Actually, get this clean one here, here we go. And that's the general gist. You want to go ahead and throw out um, food for both sides, typically, just so that the person on, the, on both sides can cut and cook at the same time. Um, and then, of course, uh, make sure you have plenty of rice and burritos ready to go here on this side. Um, if you know you need to serve something that's already being served, make sure the clean plate is away from all this stuff here, and then you can go ahead and just serve the food. You have, okay. So, and as you wait, you can go ahead and cook other stuff. Let's just get a little. Bit of a just want, I want that. Thank you. Okay, make sure you have dirty plates. The person on the left hand side on this particular stage definitely has a lot more to do than, than um, other places uh, because the person on the right is just going to be mostly just doing the um, moving the plates over. The person on the left has to clean them, so that's the thing that makes it um, so annoying. This. Again, I didn't put that in the right spot, unfortunately. When it comes to the monsters, you want to prioritize um, these monsters because they come in faster. That's one of the things that uh, the, uh, the uh, what's it called? Um, the uh, intro was saying for, for Horde 4. This is where these monsters are introduced, and they, they end up um, moving faster than these bread ones that are over here on the right hand side. Double serve. Okay, so the main thing on that stage, switch the pots and pans, um, make sure that the middle is clear of um, burritos that have meat, keep the burritos that meet on the, the islands on the left and the right, and serve with plates uh, only when you're ready to serve. Don't put anything on a plate unless it's going to be served. Board 5 is next. Is that up here? No, it's not here. Board 5 introduces gates, uh, where you'll want to use the money that you're you're um, earning by serving monsters to open the gate. So there's a gate that you can see there, kind of in the center, just above the sink. And you want to open that as, uh, as soon as possible. Uh, and usually you'll be able to open that in two serves. You might need to open it in three. So the person on the right-hand side is just going to be throwing meat. That's all they're going to do. The person left is going to go ahead and grab that meat and start chopping. Actually, in this particular case, I'm going to bring both characters over here to chop because we're going to need some meats. Okay. 
and then the person on the right here is going to be in charge of um, of basically taking a burger bun, picking up the, the meat that's done, and then um, you know basically making sure that it's ready to go out. Okay, so I'm going to insert this. this cheese. Um, orders that have more ingredients usually uh, will end up um, easy for money. So you can go ahead and serve this. And the first one was 40. That one is was 60. This gate costs 100, so I'm going to go ahead and do it immediately so I can go ahead and get much easier access to um, to going back and forth through here because you want to take the meat and now throw it up here at this point. This. We'll start chopping. Okay. Um, for stages that you have more players, you'll probably have larger orders more often. And instead of having all three of these things filled up with meat, you actually want to fill them up with condiments up there. Because the idea is um, you would fill up all three of these things with condiments and you would start chopping them. Uh, individual. And I'll show you why that is in a minute. Take this burger, and I'm going to do a um, uh, burger toss, or basically a plate toss with the burger. Just like that, get it out of my way. Same thing here. Okay. Chop chopping. So the reason that you do this is that you're going to put the plate up here, and then go back to what you're doing down here, which might be getting a burger and, you know, or washing. And then this person who's chopping can grab the burger that you placed, start preparing it, and then serve it right here. Most of the doors are accessible from up here. You see this door here, this door here, and this door here. So that makes it so that um, a person who's doing all the chopping up here can basically take the burger that you're completed down here, okay, and then take it and then create all the you know ingredients and stuff like that and then immediately serve it. So you want to be able to do that. The only time it doesn't work is, of course, this door over here, and in which case um, you might have the person prepare the burger, and this person over here will go ahead and grab it from here and then serve it here. Or even maybe this person is actually being nice and go ahead and do the serve themselves. And that's the, the general gist. Now we're going to go to the, I guess, the more most hardest hordes, Horde 6, 7, and 8. Um, my wife's favorite is Horde 6. My favorite is Horde 7, um, if that matters to anybody at all. <laughs> um, we're going to go all the way up here for Horde 6. Is that here? No, it's Horde 8. Go over here. Maybe not. Where is Horde 6? It must be over on the other side of Horde 8, I guess. Where is Horde... Where is Horde 6? Am I blind? Was Horde 6 a part of... Oh, there it is. It was a part of... Um, right after 4. That's weird. Alright. Well, anyway. Here's Horde 6. Lord 6 has a turntable in the middle of it and four different doors to serve. There's no gates, so you're not going to be opening any gates. Um, everything's going to need pasta, so you want to make sure that you have plenty of pasta cooking. Um, you'll start with four plates, so you want to make sure every um, plate has pasta. So I'm going to show you two different jobs that have to happen here. And there's new enemies here. The large watermelon-looking things uh, require two different uh, plates. So you're going to take your pasta and throw it into these pots as one job. Take the plate down there, put it up here, and then you want to take this plate and start kind of like hovering around over here. Okay, take the pasta, drop it off of this plate, and the goal is to make sure that anything with a pasta and a plate ends up right where I put those pasta plates. Right, so you want to make sure that you always have pasta with plates here. Okay, next thing you want to do is, of course, you want to start, you know, chopping stuff. So there's lots of things that we need to chop over here. Last second to get this stuff. Again, move pasta over here. Continue to cook pasta. Okay. Definitely want to keep the 
pasta. Thank you very much. And then serve the door. Serve the door. Fix this. Okay. Um, another strat that you want to have is that um, the fish and tr uh, shrimp dishes um, will take longer because basically um, the pasta, shrimp, and fish dish uh, are um, you know, a, a multiple ingredient dish. So a good strat to do is to not um, store them on these boxes here, but actually store the fish and the shrimp in corners on the bottom. So you can see this here, I'm going to store shrimp there. And I'm just going to actually let that guy continue to come in here. Because I want to show you what the story looks like. Throw that there. And I'm going to take a meat. And then the, the rest of the ingredients you want to store on top of the boxes. Okay? But because the fish and the shrimp... They take so long because there's there's so many of them. You kind of want to just like make lots of them as you have time. Okay, and then you also of course want to wash the dishes. Remember, two people make the dishwasher go faster. Okay, take a plate, pick it up, there you go, and serve. Okay, but you definitely want to have extra of all the ingredients. And you want to put the ingredients on the box that they came in, typically. So, like, for instance, this, this tomato is going to go here. So that when you need it, um, you just grab it from the box. Okay, I should be cooking pasta right now, but I don't have it. But you can see here the meat is done. I can just go ahead and cook it. As something gets picked up from the box, you should technically replace it. Okay, and that's the gist of this one. Um, you want to kind of have that set up with the with the fish on one side, shrimp on the other, in the corners, and then all the other boxes just have the ingredient that you need on top of it. And um, just uh, make sure you have lots of pasta cooked, and you'll you'll be fine. Okay. Um, another thing that might have uh, you might like to do there is to actually have a fish and shrimp um, plate uh, prepared, just one. Um, and again, the reason for that is you need two pans to cook that one order. So if you already have it cooked, um, you'll have other pans ready for other orders that'll appear, and especially in um, later waves um, in that horde, uh, you'll have like all four doors screaming for uh, service. So you want to make sure that you have um, the pan space to cook all the stuff that you need. So like I said, Horde 7 is my favorite um, because you could make a lot of food here um, kind of almost robotically. So like Horde 4, you're going to switch the pots and the pans for a similar reason. It's just easier to maintain um, where the ingredients are. Alright, so first things first, we'll take these pans off. Move actually these pans inside here. Pot. This over here. Pan. Now, because the chopping board is there on the left hand side, the rice is down here. You can just go ahead and throw the rice up. Throw some burritos throw a whole bunch of ingredients for your partner on the side. When you make a burrito, take this, put it over here, and toss it to that side. And then take some more rice, throw it in the pots.
guy immediately. Um, you'll notice that this stage has a gate in the middle. Um, you do not need to open that gate, but if you have money, um, I actually kind of recommend that you um, open it because it's going to actually help um, kind of like between... There's actually two different things you could do there. You can either use the middle, which I'm going to open up now, um, as a method to um, to make more things. So, for example, I can go ahead and put something in there um, to cook. Or it's also a really good place to store extra burritos. So I like to throw burritos in there and kind of store them so that the person that needs a burrito can just go into this room, pick something up, and then have it. Okay? And that's the general gist. You're going to have these plates that are on the bottom here. Um, it might be hard to see, but the plates are over there on the bottom right. They go on the bottom left. And you just kind of want one player over here on the right-hand side making rice um, and sending uh, meat over. And then the person on the left here is just going to be chopping those ingredients that get sent over. So let's go ahead and send one of these over, chop. And then, you know, if the person's bored, they can still help and serve, of course, whatever. Because the rice uh, burrito stuff, um, you could make a ton of this. You could make an absolute um, crazy amount of burritos and rice. Meanwhile, you know, the person who's chopping can only really make uh, as many things to cook as there are things to place the cooked items in. So if you don't have enough burritos here... Uh, if you don't have enough burritos here for the person to put the stuff that's cooking stuff in, uh, it's not going to be helpful. So I'm take this, start cooking this over here. This. Up. They're all coming in. Between these two things, I want to serve this guy because he's more powerful. And I know that because he was a, uh, what's it called? A, uh, a chili pepper, and the bread is less powerful. Okay. Don't serve. Nope. And that's it. There are six waves for Horde 7, uh, just to pay attention to. All right. And the last horde is horde eight. So horde one through seven are fairly okay to be able to play with people who don't know what's going on. As long as the person's trying to help in those hordes, you will probably get through that horde. Horde eight is practically, um, I should say, I, I don't want to say impossible, but it's very, very hard to finish Horde 8 if you have people who are, are novices because there's a lot going on. First off, there are five different doors that need to be served. Horde 7 also has five, um, but the orders in Horde 7 are a lot easier because each thing just needs the same stuff, kind of. I'm going to pause this for a moment just so I can talk about the differences. Um, so for Horde 7, you're just making burritos and it continues to make the burritos and they, in, in and just each burrito is just going to only need the one meat, and you could prep all of those things before any monsters really show up. Um, really, Horde Seven's all about serving, because you're going to have so many things um, cooked uh, that you could just put meat on on a burrito and serve it. Really simple. But for Horde Eight, Horde Eight just is another beast entirely. First off, um, I'm going to pause here. This gate here is absolutely critical um, for the success. And it is a whopping $200 uh, or 200 coins worth of, um, you know, uh, money to actually open that gate. Uh, most cases, you won't be able to open the gate uh, unless it's like the second, after the second serve, or maybe even the third serve, depending on what kind of pizza. So, for example, the pizza that I have up on top right now is a very cheap pizza. So, if I get like three of those, then maybe I'll be able to open it. All right. When you start this level, the first player here should actually be throwing things this way. So that then they can go ahead and come over here and throw stuff down here. Because this person wants to start chopping down here. All right?
I've also seen people, when they're done chopping, bring something up here. Do not do that. Keep the stuff chopped down here until you have a full pizza. Okay. Also, in this case, it might be super helpful for me to bring my other avatar in there because we need to make some pizzas. So clearly this guy's going to be killing my health right now because I was talking a lot, but what are we going to do? Okay. When you're done making a pizza, drop it here for your partner to go get the other side. Also make sure you always take um, the food that you've chopped off of the chopping block. Um, it'll be super important. Okay. So this is how you do it. Make the pizza, bring it to your partner, partner will take it, put it in the oven. And this person is going to continue making chop chopping stuff. Okay? That's the, that's the idea of the thing. Just pass these pizzas through here. If you ever have enough money um, to open the gate that's on the left, prioritize the gate on the right first. So let's see this gate here. I could technically open it right now, but I don't want to. I want to prioritize um, opening the gate on the right hand side. Be very careful about the money you spend trying to fix this gate over here. Because I need money to um, to open the gate on the, on the other side. The dirty plates are in here. Just pass these dirty plates. You could pass them here, but you really want to put them over here instead. Oops. Let's away from this one. Okay, so I have enough money to open the gate on the right, so I want to do that. Okay, what this allows me to do, and you also want to move this fire fire extinguisher out of the way, allows me to go ahead and throw this stuff like this, just next to this thing here. And now I can just get inside just like this, instead of going all the way around. Okay, that's what you want to do. Fire extinguisher is actually best in this corner over here. Wash. Uh, your partner can also go ahead and grab the dishes himself or herself. Okay. And again, the idea here again is just be making pizzas. Always be making pizzas. Um, don't put any meat on the pizzas unless you know you need that piece of meat. Um, That'll be important, but make plain pizzas as much as you possibly can. So we happen to know that we need these these ones with meats, so it's okay. Go around, mix this a little bit. Okay, and and again, this is going to be really hard because there's going to be lots of pizzas to be making. Lots of doors, you know, screaming over here. Um, but again, prioritize this gate. It's going to completely help you out um, if you can get that cleaned up. I should have passed that to my partner, but I'm only one person. One other thing I want to show you here is if you accidentally, um, you know, put a plate on the wrong thing, and I'm just going to do this as an example without actually serving it to this guy. But um, if you put a plate on a on a uh, a pizza that you're not supposed to be serving yet, so I'm going to do that here. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to fully cook this pizza even though it's supposed to be a um, a uh, what's it called chicken. I fully cook this pizza, and let's say that you're running around and there's lots of things beeping, and all of a sudden you pick this thing up and you have it on a plate, and you're like, oh, I was supposed to put this plate on something else, right? Put the pizza back in the oven, and you can take the plate back clean, okay? Just like that, all right? So again, if you take this thing out of the oven like this, and you're like, crap, I didn't mean to do that, put it back in the oven, put the plate down, and then just drop this pizza somewhere else, okay? That's um, a really helpful thing 
uh, because I notice people will have something that looks like this and they just be like waiting and it's like I need this plate even though it's like not washed so I'm like screw it just take the just do that little switch there super helpful um, and that's the last thing I'll kind of mention well actually I'll mention one more thing try not to fix doors that don't have monsters in front of them uh, unless you're all done and you have the money so if you have the money and you're all done with this particular wave you kind of want to you know set these doors up for a little bit of success so you want to like put a board up for this one you want to put up a board up for this one just so that when the next wave comes and i'm busy doing whatever i'm doing the monster is not immediately trying to knock down and come through okay and that's all i wanted to show you for uh night of the hangry horde hope that you have some more insight into how to get through those stages they are challenging um but uh, if you have those, you know, little pieces in mind, uh, it'll definitely help out. All right. See you next time.